Number 42, letter A. Find the total electric field at x is equal to 1 centimeter in figure B, given that Q is equal to 5 uh, nanocoulombs. All right, so here's uh, figure B. The location of 1 centimeter is going to be right here, so let me dot that in. Okay. Now, um, we got to find the net electric field, basically, or total electric field, all right, at that particular point. Now, remember, electric field is a function. If we look at the formula over here on the right-hand side, it's equal to kq over r squared. What that means is that electric field at a point, this point in particular, is going to be a function of two main things, the charge value and the distance relative to that point, all right? Now, uh, basically, you know, <laughs> if we had to, uh, I guess, uh, not really, it's kind of, Confu it's a little strange, but the electric field line here produced by the negative Q, right? Negative 2Q here. Uh, what's the distance there? That's zero, right? So what happens when you divide by a zero, according to this formula? It becomes undefined, right? So the electric field line there is, uh, you know, the electric field actually at that exact particular point is basically infinite. Um, yeah, I don't know if they wanted it to work that way. Not really sure. Um, but, or if they just want us to disregard it since it's at the point. But, you know, technically it becomes undefined. The electric field there is undefined. So we either got to do two things. Either it's going to be infinite, then I don't really care what these do. Um, or uh, we're just going to kind of disregard it. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll choose not to disregard it because it's probably not what they were looking for. Uh, but in any case, so... Uh, I'm already not going to consider then the negative 2q because, like I said, there is no distance. So now let's talk about this uh, positive q over here. All right. That's positive. And therefore, you know, the electric field lines emanate away, right, or out of that object. So therefore, the electric field line uh, at this point will be pointing net to the left, right, for the blue one. Then let's take a look. This one right here, I'll do red. Okay. So let's, I'm just darkening that in a little bit. I know it doesn't really change much there, uh, but that's going to be positive three. So therefore, that's going to now be pointing out to the left again, probably a little bigger. Um, and then uh, it depends also on the distance. So it might be the same. I don't know. We'll see. And then the negative one. So let's maybe put that one in black for now. OK, don't confuse it with that one. That one's that's just a point. And this one in black, the electric field always points towards it. So talking about it on this point, we're going to have a vector pointing that way. Okay, so basically I can call this E3, uh, the blue one E1, and then the red one E2. Now look, I got vectors pointing in exactly the same uh, axis, right, in the x-axis. So I know to find the total if electric fields are vectors. I know to find the total, it's basically just going to simply be the summation, okay? Since E3 is pointing to the right, I'm going to label that one to be positive. And then since E1 and E2 are pointing to the left, they're negative. So E Three minus E1, and then minus E2. That will equal the total electric field, right? I could say will equal, you know, E total or something. Now just expand on each of those uh, electric fields. Remember they're equal to K times Q. In this case, it's Q3 all over R3 squared minus then K times Q1 all over R1 squared minus then k, q, 2, all over r, 2 squared. All right, we have a common k, so what I'm going to do is just factor that out to make my life a little easier. And then now just plug in the charges. So q, 3, right, I chose that to be the black one. And it has a value of q. Uh, now you can plug, by the way, what I did was I wound up taking the signs into account before I actually plugged in anything, okay? So... You know, in this formula, notice how it's the absolute value of Q there. All right, so you kind of have to do that because you're going to lose the signs in terms of the charge. You know, in terms of uh, if you plugged in a negative Q here, it's really technically absolute values. So you kind of have to take the direction into account before you calculate this. It would definitely be best. So Q3, they told us that it's just a value of Q, and they told us Q is 5 nanocoulombs. So that's just going to be 5 times 10 to the minus 9th all over then the distance. So this looks like it's, oh man, now i got to count, right? 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh boy. So 14. And relative to then this, that's at 1, so that looks like a difference of 13 centimeters, but we need that in meters, so 0.13 squared. All right, minus then Q1, uh, which is just Q, right? E1, yep. 
So that's going to be 5 times 10 to the minus 9th, all then over. What do we got here? So this is at 5, and that's at 1, so that's a difference of 4 centimeters, so 0.04 squared, and then minus uh, Q2, which is going to be 3 times now the 5 times 10 to the minus 9, so that's you know 15, you can think of it as that way. It basically come out to 1.5 times 10 to the minus 8th, and then uh, divide that now by the distance, so 5, 6, 7, and that's at 8. This is at 1, therefore the difference is 7 centimeters, so 0.07 in terms of meters squared. And voila, just go about your calculation. So let's do it. Oh, by the way, I should have probably plugged in the value for k here, but you know it's 8.99 times 10 to the 9th, all right? So 8.99 times 10 to the 9th multiplied now by parentheses 5 times 10 to the minus 9th over 0.13 squared minus... 5 times 10 to the minus 9th divided by 0.04 squared minus 1.5 times 10 to the minus 8th divided by 0.07 squared. Close the parentheses. I get about uh, negative here, so there's going to be negative. Uh, 5.30, I guess. 5.30 times 10 to the 4th, and that's Newtons per coulomb. All right? So... This sign now tells me the direction. It's And if you look at the picture, right, I mean, we got two of them pointing to the left, one of them pointing to the right. That doesn't by any means, you know, indicate that it should be uh, negative. But because, again, the distances are all important, uh, but it does make intuitive sense. OK, the only the attractive one, there was only one of them, but it's the furthest away. So this would be even the weakest. All right. So it does make intuitive, you know, it does make sense. All right, so that's letter A. Now what do we got to do? Oh, goodness. Find the total. Find the total at X is equal to 11 now. Great. Let's do it again. Now you can't cancel anything, though, because everything has a distance relative to this particular point. <coughs> so let's call this 1, 2, 3, and 4. So uh, in terms of the negative charge, the field always points towards the negative. So that, you know, actually, let me just do this. Let me pull it out here so um, this will be this will represent e1 so the e1 up here is obviously not the same as the e1 on the bottom all right just keep that in mind uh, so then for the two that's positive so it emanates away so I'm going to point another vector away so this is going to be e e2 then this is three right that's positive it also points away so I'm going to have another one e3 over here e3 and then here's 4, it's negative, it always points towards, right, so relative to this point, it's pointing again in that direction. So we're going to have three of them pointing in the same direction here, all right? So we got E, then E4. Now you know how to set it up, right? It's going to be E2 plus E3 plus E4 minus E1, and that's all going to be equal to the total. So now all we're going to do is plug everything on in, right? We'll pull out a common K. And then we'll plug in the numbers. So the Q, it's negative 2. Q, but remember, don't worry about the negative sign. Um, so it's 5 nanocoulombs, so it's going to be 1 times 10 to the 8th, all divided by the distance now. So this is 1, this is 11, so the distance there is 10, so it's 0 0.1 squared. Don't forget to square it. Plus then the third one now. Why did I do 3? Oh, yeah. So now the third one. So that's going to be 3q. We already found the value uh, down and below before, so 1.5 times 10 to the 8th. All divided by now that distance, so that's 1, 2, 3 units away, so 0 0.03 squared plus then e4. e4 is over here. Uh, that's just q, so that's 5 times 10 to the minus 9th. All divided by then the distance, so that's 1, 2, 3 units, so 0 0.03 squared minus then e1. And E1 is all the way over here. Did I... You silly man. I made a mistake, right? There is E... I did E2 as this one because I saw the 2 down here. So all we got to do, watch. Look at this. Isn't this beautiful? Just move this on over here. See? There's no such thing as... There's no such thing as a mistake. Just happy accidents. So now we're going to look at 2 appropriately. So it's just Q. So this is going to be 5 times 10 to the minus 9th all divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay? So it looks like 6 units away, so 0 0.06 squared. And that's going to be equal to the total. Let's get out the calculator. So 8 times 8.99 times 10 to the 9th, multiplied by now, parentheses, 
5 times 10 to the minus 9th divided by 0 0.06 squared plus 1.5 times 10 to the minus 8th. No, yes, it's minus 8th. What am I doing? These are negative. What in the world is going on? <laughs> I'm not sure. Divided by 0 0.03. I'm just seeing if you guys are paying attention. You know, I'm trying to challenge you. I know this problem is a little too easy, so I'm just trying to make it even more confusing. Uh, divided by 0 0.03 squared, and then 1 times 10 to the minus 8th divided by 0 0.1 squared. Close those parentheses, and I pray that this is right. So this is going to be 2.03 uh, times 10 to the 3, 4, 5. All right, and uh, just double check me with the math. Every the, the logic is totally fine, but I was talking as I was doing this, so it could be a slight error, but double check. And this is going to be in terms of newtons per coulomb. All right, great. All right, um, that's B, and then C. If the charges are allowed to move and eventually be brought to rest by friction, what will the final charge configuration be? What? Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, how do we? All right. Um, yeah. What are we gonna do? I don't know. I'm not really sure. Uh, so whenever you're not sure, just start with something. Start with something simple. So let's. I guess we're trying to figure out. You know, if these are all left to their own devices, how will they? organize will they all organize into one point or will they distribute so i guess i'm going to start with the biggest charge all right so this is going to be positive three three q let's start let's then take a look at the next biggest charge so this is an attractive force between the two biggest charges right so if these are placed in the vicinity of one another they will attract one another until they totally meet right all right so now what we're going to have is we're going to have at this single point we're going to have both positive three q and I'll put a little dot here, negative 2q. All right. Now let's take a look at maybe this negative guy. All right. So now the negative guy, uh, he's floating around over here, negative q. What's going to happen? Well, he's going to be attracted to the positive 3, but repelled by the negative 2. But who's stronger? The positive is. So the positive will win. So this guy will become attracted all the way towards that group. So that he's going to aggregate on over here. Okay. So now we have negative Q over here, okay, all at the same point. Last but not least, we got this positive Q guy hanging out. Wherever you organize it, it doesn't matter. You could have organized the, uh, I'll, put, I'll put it in blue. You could organize the positive guy out here. You could organize him over here. You know, it doesn't matter, all right? Uh, but what's going to happen? Well, the two negative charges, which since they're in the same spot, they have, a, even though they're separate, they have a feel of negative three, right? That's going to attract then the Q, all right? And then what happens to then the single positive three Q? Well, that's gonna repel this one. And they're equal, right, but opposite. Three Qs negative, three Qs positive. They're both pulling in or pushing in opposite directions here on Q. So will Q basically have ever kind of aggregate with that? No, right? So that's essentially the answer. <laughs> uh, you, we're gonna have, I guess, Two, char two groups of charges, one that's basically neutral overall, and the other that's net positive. All right? Sure. Guys, thank you very much. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Take care.